नमस्कार एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ बैक्टीरियल फिजियोलॉजी एज वेल एज मेटाबॉलिज्म दैट इज जनरेशन और मोड्स ऑफ जनरेशन ऑफ एटीपी इन बैक्टीरिया एज यू नो दैट एवरी सेल रिक्वायर्स एनर्जी for the purpose of basic life activities which the cells carry out and if we look at the metabolic machinery of every microbial cell then cells themselves are functioning just like small machines and these reactions which are going on inside the cell they are always as per the reactions that take place in chemistry you have learned lot of reactions in chemistry also and you must be knowing that chemical reactions they follow laws of thermodynamics likewise reactions which take place inside the bacterial cell which we call metabolic reactions they also follow laws of thermo thermodynamics and the basic understanding of this thermodynamics helps us to understand these reactions in a much better way metabolic reactions can be broadly classified as catabolic reactions as well as anabolic reactions the reactions which are degradative reactions during which complex complex macromolecules are broken down into simple substances are known as catabolic reactions and they are generally energy generating reactions whereas anabolic reactions are those reactions which utilize this particular energy and which are associated with biosynthesis of building blocks as well as macromolecules in general we can say that the reactions which are taking place inside the cell they they are based upon production conservation as well as utilization of energy and such kind of energy changes which occur during biochemical reactions during metabolic reactions it is broadly known as study of bioenergetics and as i earlier mentioned bioenergetics or the reactions that we are going to study as a part of bioenergetics they always follow they always obey laws of thermodynamics you all have studied that energy is the basic requirement of every living cell and living cells carry out various activities by using this energy the activities may include chemical work or it may include transport work or it may include mechanical work and large amount of energy likewise is also required for the purpose of biosynthesis from where does the energy is generated within a cell the sources of energy for a bacterial cell for a microbial cell could be a chemical compound and those microorganisms which derive energy from chemical substrates by using chemicals as oxidizable substrates they are broadly known as chemotropes and those which derive their energy from sunlight they are broadly known as phototropes as you can see from this slide it is the basis of chemotrophy as well as phototrophy you can see that the chemical compounds which can be utilized can be organic compounds or they can be inorganic compounds and accordingly we may classify the bacteria as chemo organotroph or chemo lithotroph by whereas in case of phototrophs you can see that source of energy is the radiant energy and the organisms have a capacity they have inherent capacity to harvest radiant energy because they have green pigment chlorophyll and these are known as phototrophs from this table you can see uh, a detailed nutritional classification photoautotrophs photoheterotrophs chemoautotrophs as well as chemoheterotrophs along with the name of the substrates which they use as well as along with the name of electron donors which they use during the process of energy generation i have also tried to give you a summary of the nutritional categories among bacteria depending upon the mode of nutrition you may classify broadly bacteria as autotroph as well as heterotrophs and among both 
ऑटोट्रॉफ कुड बी ए फोटो ऑटोट्रॉफ और इट कुड बी ए केमो ऑटोट्रॉफ एंड अमंग हिट्रोट्रॉफ ऑल्सो यू मे बी ए फोटो हिट्रोट्रॉफ और केमो हिट्रोट्रॉफ बिकॉज यू नो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द एनर्जी जनरेशन वी ऑल्सो मस्ट हैव एन आइडिया अबाउट द काइंड ऑफ सबस्ट्रेट्स काइंड ऑफ सोर्सेस द ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर गोइंग टू यूज एज सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी एंड दोज सबस्ट्रेट्स विल डिसाइड द न्यूट्रिशनल कैटेगरी ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्यूलर ग्रुप If we talk about the flow of energy as as well as carbon in an ecosystem, then for us, for every one of us, sun is the ultimate source of energy. The earth on which we live can be considered as an open source of energy, and the radiant energy it is harvested by green plants as well as algae, and then we all, algae, we all humans, animals as well as other. microorganisms they are largely dependent upon this harvested form of energy that we obtain from the green plants in what form cell traps and utilizes the energy when we talk about energy generation in bacteria let me emphasize that microorganisms are believed to be highly efficient in conservation of energy whatever energy is generated during reactions during biochemical reactions that energy is hardly wasted it is immediately converted into form of a high energy chemical bond like ester bond phosphoester bond or thioester bond and those compounds which are having one or more number of high energy bonds they are known as high energy compounds or high energy intermediates you can see from the diagram various kinds of energy rich compounds that is 13 biphosphoglyceric acid atp as you all know that atp is regarded to be the universal source of energy for microorganisms but apart from that you may have acyl coenzyme a derivatives like acetyl coenzyme a compounds like phosphoenol pyruvate they all have one or more number of high energy bond in the form of phosphoanhydride bond and by hydrolysis of this bond required amount of energy can be generated as and when required you can see the structure the most common source of energy as i mentioned earlier is the atp which works not only as a source of energy during reactions but it also works as a phosphate group donor you can see the structure of atp and you can also see the high energy bond of atp again here also you can see two phosphoanhydride bonds in the structure of atp and in the model also you can see that how these phosphoanhydride bonds are highlighted these are some of the examples of other energy rich compounds apart from atp that is gtp utp or ctp or datp atp can be used as a general source of energy whereas utp is used for biosynthesis of polysaccharides gtp it is very well used for biosynthesis of proteins as well as uh, porphyrins and likewise ctp also it is used for biosynthesis of lipids as well as phospholipids at the same time from the table you can also have a broad idea about the standard free energy change that is value of delta g whenever such high energy intermediates are hydrolyzed you can see that the values of most of these compounds they are in the minus that means whenever such high energy compounds are hydrolyzed it is always that little amount of energy is released and that's why this energy which is released can be used up by cell for biosynthetic activities again you can see example of some of the standard free energy change for some of the chemical reactions like hydrolysis of atp to adp you can see that when atp is hydrolyzed to adp minus 7.3 kilo calories of energy is released that is value of delta g0 is minus 7.3 kilo calories similarly compounds like glutamine or ethyl acetate they are also when they are hydrolyzed and whenever high energy bond is broken you have minus value of delta g0 let us now focus on to the various biochemical mechanisms for generation of atp in bacteria it can be divided as substrate level phosphorylation then there are special mechanisms which madam is going to talk about that is use of electron transport chain where she will also talk to you about energy which is derived by a respiratory mechanism 
namely aerobic respiration as well as anaerobic respiration which is an important energy generation mechanism in chemotropes and finally if we look at phototropes then in case of phototropes energy is principally generated by a process which is known as photophosphorylation just we recall earlier things which i told you that whenever you know value of delta g is negative then the reaction is always exothermic or exergonic reaction it always proceeds spontaneously because it is an energy generating reaction whereas if you if you learn about or if you go to biosynthetic reactions which requires an input of energy there the value of delta g0 is always positive and the reactions never proceed spontaneously they are said to be endothermic reaction and if i just give you an analog mitro chemistry ni andar tame aaj prakriyao ne ushma shoshak ane ushma kshepak prakriyao tarike olkho cho jene apne microbiology ni andar exothermic ane endothermic prakriyao tarike classify kariye chi a very simple mechanism used by many chemotropes it is the substrate level phosphorylation basically generation of atp it is phosphorylation of adp but that inorganic phosphate which is added to atp it is added along with the formation of phosphoanhydride bond and because it is formation of phosphoanhydride bond it requires an input of energy there are microorganisms which are able to carry out phosphorylation of adp by direct interaction of adp with a high energy intermediate such as phosphoenol pyruvate or 13 biphosphoglyceric acid recall in the earlier slide i have shown you that both phosphoenol pyruvate as well as 13 biphosphoglyceric acid are high energy intermediates they have a phosphoanhydride bond during the reaction between such high energy intermediate like phosphoenol pyruvate and adp the phosphoanhydride bond of phosphoenol pyruvate is broken and that phosphate is added to adp along with formation of a new phosphoanhydride bond leading to formation of atp and this is how adp gets phosphorylated by its direct interaction with a high energy intermediate and the mechanism is known as substrate level phosphorylation generally substrate level phosphorylation it is the widespread mechanism of atp generation in chemoheterotrophs especially anaerobic chemoheterotrophs which are having fermentative metabolism which do not have components of electron transport chain and which are not able to use organic i am sorry inorganic compound like oxygen or another inorganic compound as final electron acceptor and those bacteria which are having fermentative mode of metabolism during their fermentative reaction they generate atp by substrate level phosphorylation now having learned about substrate level phosphorylation we are now going over to another mechanism we have learned about the basic aspects of energy as well as energy generation now a very important mechanism of atp generation by respiratory mechanism it is going to be discussed by uh, my distinguished colleague professor nilaben upadhyay she is head of the microbiology department in gujarat college and i request her to discuss to take the discussion further and to give you a very good idea about the respiration as well as role of electron transport chain nila ben please um, welcome to all of you in this lecture today i will discuss about energy derived from chemicals in that uh, my colleague mr anand bhat has already explained about substrate level phosphorylation i will be discussing about respiration linked photophosphorylation in respiration linked photophosphorylation we have to discuss about aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration both respiration is energy yielding oxidation reduction reaction where organic or inorganic compound serves as electron acceptor uh, electron donor and inorganic compound serves as electron acceptor in aerobic respiration molecular oxygen serves as final electron acceptor and in anaerobic respiration uh, oxidized compound other than molecular oxygen 
serves as final electron acceptor. Now these aerobic and anaerobically respiring organisms undergoes electron transport chain and by operation of electron transport chain they produce large amount of energy and respiration or respiratory metabolism yields maximum ATPs. In this particular figure it is schematic representation of an electron transport chain where we can see sequential oxidation and reduction of various carriers. Carriers are present in the membrane of bacteria and inner membrane of mitochondria and they are oriented in a specific manner and that is how finally uh, terminal electron acceptor is reduced. Now in this electron transport chain there are number of carriers and these carriers in most of the cases are uh, flavoproteins, iron sulfur proteins, quinones and cytochromes. Of course in different organisms type of carriers are different but most commonly found carriers are uh, what I will be discussing just now. First is flavoprotein. Flavoprotein that is uh, that includes FMN and FAD, flavin mononucleotide and flavin adenine dinucleotide. This is the structure of FMN. FMN and in FAD active site is same. They are derived from uh, yellow prosthetic group is riboflavin. Riboflavin vitamin is present in both the uh, coenzymes. Uh, the active sites are shown with the yellow color and it shows that two electrons and two protons that is equivalent to two hydrogen ions are accepted by FMN and FAD. Next carrier that is iron sulfur protein. Iron sulfur protein may be 2-Fe2S type, 4-Fe4S type, 3-Fe4S type or 8-Fe8S type. This 4-Fe4S and 8-Fe8S type uh, produces cube-like structure and in 2-Fe2S type of uh, iron sulfur protein, planar, the structure is planar and they are joined by covalent bond to sulfur uh, of the cysteine moiety. Uh, this particular uh, carrier accepts single electron upon reduction. 8-Fe8S uh, type of uh, uh, iron sulfur protein has two active sites so it accepts two electrons. But 2-Fe2S type that is most commonly found in bacteria, it is uh, commonly known as pyridoxine and it accepts only one electron. Next carrier is coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q that is ubiquinone and menaquinone. Menaquinone is also another type of quinone. Uh, the difference between ubiquinone and menaquinone that is menaquinone has one additional benzene ring which is replaced by methoxy groups. Otherwise active site remains same. It is shown that keto group is converted to, uh, it is transformed to hydroxyl groups. Here also two hydrogen ions are, the, are accepted. That means two electrons and two protons are accepted by this carrier. Next carrier is HEM, uh, that is cytochrome. It belongs to uh, uh, it belongs to all hem containing <coughs> proteins that is catalase, hemoglobin, they all belong to same group. They have tetrapyrrole ring structure, iron is present in the integral pro portion and that is the active site, it undergoes oxidation reduction reaction and upon reduction it accepts one electron. Uh, this uh, side groups, side chains are attached to the protein in case of uh, cytochrome. Different cytochromes have different structures. They are of various types. They differ in their biochemical properties and spectral properties. Generally, uh, absorption maxima of cytochrome <coughs> is in between 450 nanometers to 800 nanometers and molecular weight is from thousands to lakhs. 
so this way we have discussed about various carriers now each carrier has its specific redox potential now what is redox potential redox potential is uh, ability a tendency of a substrate to undergo oxidation or reduction reaction or in other words we can say that it is relative voltage required to uh, oxidize or to reduce uh, the electrons in comparison to that of hydrogen electron normal uh, this uh, redox value for hydrogen electrode that is minus 0.42 and accordingly for each carrier uh, fad quinones and all the redox values have been shown now in electron transport chain generally reduced substrates donates electrons to nad nad is reduced nad dehydrogenase is membrane bound and it will donate electrons to fad and fad will be reduced and that way electrons enter in the electron transport chain if we look at the components of electron transport chain uh, the uh, redox values are in ascending order and the energy level is in uh, descending order so highest energy level remains with that of fad and nadh and lowest energy level that remains with oxygen that is shown in the next slide for oxygen it is 0.82 now we have the question that how redox potential that is uh, Uh, that can be linked with the free energy change how it can be helpful in understanding of bioenergetics of the cell by calculation of redox potential we can very well calculate free energy change that is already shown in the uh, formula uh, if uh, the formula is delta g0 dash that is free energy change that is equivalent to minus nf delta i dash 0 uh, that is n that is number of electrons transferred f that is faraday's constant and delta i dash 0 that is difference in the reduction potential for one of the reaction that difference in redox potential that is calculated the reaction is 2h2 plus o2 that gives 2h2o and for this reaction two half reactions have been mentioned and the difference uh, their uh, redox potentials have also been shown and their difference is uh, uh, put in the formula now we have to understand how electron transport chain helps in generation of energy we have thought about carriers the redox values now orientation of the membrane is such that carriers remain in sequence and the sequence is hydrogen carriers and electron carriers are alternatively present as i had mentioned quinones and uh, fad they are hydrogen carriers and iron sulfur protein and cytochromes are electron carriers and they are alternatively present in the electron transport chain so when Uh, electron carrier donates electrons to hydrogen carrier at that time hydrogen carrier has to trap protons from the inner side of the cytoplasm and when hydrogen carrier has to donate electrons to electron carrier at that time protons are spared so naturally they will move on the outer direction so slowly h plus accumulate on the outer side of the membrane and that way th that results in formation of proton gradient this is the typical electron transport chain which has been observed in <coughs> uh, aerobic bacteria and eukaryotic cells electron transport chain is uh, in most general cases uh, nadh is the donor of electrons nadh will donate electrons to fad fad will donate electrons to iron sulfur protein iron sulfur proteins to coenzyme q 
coenzyme Q to cytochromes and then molecular oxygen serves as final electron acceptor. Now there are four complexes. The electron transport chain is highly complex and that is why the, to understand electron transport chain we should know about these complexes. The complexes, uh, first complex is, I mean the word complex is used because they are consisting of number of subunits and proteins. First complex in E. coli when it was studied, uh, it is carrying 14 uh, different components. 14 different components are present in this complex one. Complex one is NADH coenzyme Q oxidoreductase. This name is given because NAD is oxidized and coenzyme Q is reduced. And this complex, as, as it is shown in the figure, it carries um, uh, flavoproteins and iron sulfur proteins and all other carriers. Uh, now, electrons are accepted by coenzyme Q. Now, complex number 2 has not been shown here, but it is succinate dehydrogenase complex. Succinate is converted to fumarate and succinate will donate electrons to flavoprotein and directly they will reach to uh, coenzyme Q. So the steps of uh, uh, which are carried out in complex 1 that is bypassed in uh, by complex 2. So finally coenzyme Q is reduced. Reduced coenzyme Q donates electrons to complex 3. Complex 3 has uh, is BC1 complex. It carries two type of B cytochromes and C1 and uh, both the B type cytochromes are of lower potential and higher potential. And finally via cytochrome C, electrons are accepted by uh, complex 4 which carries uh, A type cytochromes, cytochrome A, cytochrome A3 and finally molecular oxygen serves as electron acceptor. Uh, now uh, when the transport of electrons occurs, at that time, as I mentioned in, in that schematic representation, uh, this uh, uh, carriers are alternatively present. Uh, first is hydrogen carrier, then electron carrier like that. So uh, whenever electrons move from one carrier to the other carrier, either the protons are trapped from the cytoplasm by hydrolysis of H2O, or they move on the outer direction. Totally 10 uh, different protons approximately, they are accumulated and when they pass through the uh, enzyme which is named as ATP synthase or ATP phosphohydrolase, uh, at that time they generate 3 ATPs. At a time 3 protons move through the pore of ATP synthase and as uh, 10 protons have been accumulated as proton gradient, 3 ATPs are generated by operation of this kind of electron transport chain. Next is the, uh, uh, shows the structure of ATPase or ATP synthase or ATP phosphohydrolase enzyme. This particular enzyme is multi-component enzyme. It has two components, F0 and F1. F0 is membrane bound. F1 is attached to the membrane. And in, uh, <coughs> there is a stock which carries gamma, delta and epsilon subunits. Uh, when the electrons enter in the uh, uh, ATP phosphohydrolase enzyme, uh, sorry, when the protons re-enter in the ATP phosphohydrolase enzyme, uh, at that time uh, this F0 portion which is consisting of three different type of subunits that is A, B and C, that C, uh, ring of C subunits uh, moves. Now uh, connected to this uh, C subunit there is A and B subunit in F0 uh, component of ATPase. Now the uh, 2B subunit, 1A and delta subunit, they mo uh, make the straighter arm so that is attached to the F1. Now in this figure, it is shown how exactly conformational change into this enzyme takes place. 
as i told you first uh, as soon as protons enter in the uh, c ring uh, uh, the gamma pro uh, gamma component which is present in f1 that undergoes conformational change and it affects b subunit uh, beta subunit now f1 has alpha and beta subunits both beta subunits has uh, three active sites uh, now slowly uh, there is conformational change into uh, beta subunit uh, first 30% rotation 30 degree rotation uh, will result in conformational change so adp and pi will enter in the active site and then 90 degree conformational change takes place and that is why uh, three important uh, conformational change occurs in one atp adp and pi bound uh, binds to form atp in the second conformational change atp uh, bind to the active site and in third conformational change atp release atp is released from the beta subunit so this way energy generation takes place to understand this complex mechanism of energy generation uh, there were three hypotheses which were put forward chemical coupling conformational coupling and chemi osmotic hypothesis most uh, uh, acceptable hypothesis that is chemi osmotic hypothesis it was given by peter michael and that is why he was awarded nobel prize in chemistry in 1978 according to this theory uh, electrons uh, uh, when protons are taken up by different carriers from the cytoplasm at that time water molecule is splitted and due to that h plus and oh minus are formed h plus enters through the uh, attach to the carrier and on the outer side of uh, carrier on the outer side of the cytoplasmic membrane uh, the protons are accumulated due to that there is a difference in charge takes place uh, the outer side of the cell becomes more acidic and more positively charged ions are present and inner side of the membrane uh, that becomes more basic and there is accumulation of oh ions and so minus ions uh, are accumulated in the cytoplasm so this way there is a uh, clear cut uh, charge and electrochemical discrimination between outer side and inner side so protons have to re enter in the cytoplasm and re entry of protons takes place by atp phosphohydrolase enzyme that we have already discussed so these are the points which explains that uh, intact nature of cytoplasmic membrane integral membrane proteins and sequence of carriers in the electron transport chain that plays important role and that results in extrusion of protons and formation of proton gradient and formation of uh, ultimately atp so that we combine chemical and electrical potential difference make proton motive force and proton motive force is useful for generation of atp it can be used directly for uh, flagellar movement and for active transport like mechanisms of the cell uh, to understand properly energy generation uh, we should know about inhibitors and uncouplers number of inhibitors and uncouplers have been studied which affects electron transport chain in one or other way and that is why uh, we can study properly that in on which site uh, which particular uh, uh, i mean how many atps are generated first is pyrimidine pyrimidine competes with coenzyme q and so after coenzyme q flow of electrons will be stopped so total atp generation will be less similarly antimycin a blocks electron transport between cytochrome b and c so 
दैट वे फर्दर इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन इज ब्लॉक्ड एंड टोटल एनर्जी जनरेशन विल बी रिड्यूस्ड साइनाइड कार्बन मोनोक्साइड एंड एजाइड हैज ऑल्सो सिमिलर टाइप ऑफ एक्शन इट एफेक्ट्स द फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स साइनाइड एंड एजाइड एफेक्ट्स द लास्ट स्टेप दैट इज साइट इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन मूवमेंट फ्रॉम साइटोक्रोम ए टू मॉलिकुलर ऑक्सीजन दैट इज प्रिवेंटेड इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ दीज इनहिबिटर्स नाउ द रिमेनिंग कंपाउंड दे आर इनहिबिटर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन बट दे हैव बीन सेपरेटली क्लासिफाइड एज अनकप्लर्स अनकप्लर्स आर दोज विच एलाउज इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन टू कंटिन्यू बट एटीपी जनरेशन डू नॉट टेक प्लेस एंड एग्जाम्पल्स आर डायनाइट्रोफिनॉल एंड वेलिनोमाइसिन एफ सी सी पी एंड डी सी सी पी फुल नेम्स आर गिवन नाउ दीज कंपाउंड दीज कंपाउंड एफेक्ट्स कंटिन्यूस ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन विदाउट एफेक्टिंग एटीपी आई मीन विदाउट एफेक्टिंग फ्लो ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एटीपी जनरेशन इज स्टॉप्ड दे इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस डिसिपेट डिसिपेट द प्रोटोन ग्रेडियंट प्रोटोन ग्रेडियंट इज ब्रोकन डाउन बाय दीज कॉम्प्लेक्स कंपाउंड डीसीसीपी एंड डायनाइट्रोफिनॉल दे आर लिपोफिलिक एंड दे एफेक्ट दे अटैच टू दी एच प्लस and as they can move through the cytoplasmic membrane they come back into the cytoplasm and that way proton gradient is distorted and atp generation do not take place now this is in general about electron transport chain which has been studied in eukaryotic systems and most of the bacteria but still in bacteria you can see very much diversity uh bacterial electron transport chains are much diverse they use different type of electron donors different type of electron acceptors and uh, ultimately they uh, perform electron transport chain and generate energy for aerobic bacteria we have already seen electron transport chain but then also we will discuss specifically with e coli uh and these are also examples of anaerobic bacteria which shows different types of electron acceptors and these are the reduced products in general uh nitrate sulfate carbonate they act as final electron acceptors during anaerobic respiration this is the aerobic respiratory system of e coli e coli Uh, shows different type of electron transport chains in different physiological conditions uh, in e coli when oxygen level is low at that time uh, this uh, electrons from nad are accepted by fat fad to coenzyme q and ultimately cytochrome b o path that is chosen in aerobic condition and when anaerobic condition is there finally electrons move to cytochrome d instead of cytochrome o and molecular oxygen serves as final electron acceptor total amount of atp generation uh, by e coli that is comparatively less in comparison to other aerobic forms this is the electron transport chain studied in paracoccus denitrificans Paracoccus denitrificans is a versatile organism and it can grow aerobically also anaerobically also it can grow <coughs> chemo heterotrophically also and chemo autotrophically also now these are various components of electron transport chain here final electron acceptor is nitrate four enzymes are involved that is nitrate reductase nitrate reductase nitric oxide reductase and nit trus oxide reductase as they are shown in the electron transport chain you can see that this electron transport chain is highly branched and uh, at each step for reduction 
different uh, coenzymes are involved and different complexes are there. So, it has been shown in the figure that uh, first acceptor is NO3. NO3 is converted to NO2 by acceptance of two electrons. But this is not, uh, this reaction will not give good energy. And that is why generally organisms perform denitrification. Nitrate is converted to molecular nitrogen by corresponding enzymes which I have mentioned. And five electrons are taken up by nitrate to produce nitrite. This shows ATP yield during electron transport chain. Theoretically, we say that three NAD, I mean if NAD is involved, then three ATPs are generated. If FAD is involved and if FADH2 is formed, then two ATPs are formed. This is a theoretical picture and that is why when one molecule of glucose is broken down to uh, 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 via glycolysis and Krebs cycle, at that time we say that 10 molecules of NADH are formed and 4 ATPs are generated by substrate level phosphorylation and 2 molecules of FADH2 are formed. So, totally we count 38 ATPs, but practically it is not so. Practically NADH generates only 2.5 ATPs, FADH2 generates 1.5 and that is why glucose oxidation will also generate 30 ATPs instead of 38 ATPs which we count. Now, in comparison to this uh, normal picture of ATP generation, if you compare with E. coli, then E. coli at higher oxygen level generates 1.3 ATPs. So, that is quite low in comparison to uh, normal systems and E. coli at low oxygen levels generates only 0.67 ATPs. So, during anaerobic respiration, uh, still less amount of ATP is generated, but anaerobes also utilize electron transport chain only for their energy generation. So, maximum energy is generated by this mechanism. Of course, there are other mechanisms as Professor Anand Bhai has said, but this is the main mechanism for ATP generation. Thank you, Rila Ben. Uh, she has very nicely summarized the respiratory mechanism, aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration, and she has explained you about the role of the various components of electron transport chain. As I was earlier telling you that phototrophic microorganisms, they have an inherent ability to trap the radiant energy and ultimately for all of us, sun, sun is believed to be the ultimate source of energy. So, this is also a mode of ATP generation in case of those bacteria which are having photosynthetic pigments. Generally, the major photosynthetic pigment is chlorophyll, but there are diversity of the photosynthetic pigment when you look at photosynthetic bacteria. There, as a result of absorption of light energy, the photosynthetic pigment along with the chlorophyll as well as other accessory pigment undergoes photoactivation and that photoactivated chlorophyll loses an electron. The electron which is removed from photoactivated chlorophyll passes through components of electron transport chain as it has been explained to you that in those chemotropes which are having respiratory mechanism, there are electron transport chain, there is electron transport chain, electron carrier molecules are membrane bound. Likewise, in phototrops also, there are electron carrier molecules which are membrane bound electron carrier molecules. They basically function in a similar way as the carrier molecules in chemotropes function. They might be of different nature. The components of electron transport chain might be of different nature. When you compare the components of electron transport chain of phototrops with those of chemotrops, but that photoactivated chlorophyll, when it is going to lose an electron, that electron is going to flow through components of electron transport chain and will lead to formation of a proton gradient and energy of proton gradient is going to be utilized for ATP generation. 
depending upon the flow of electron electrons as you know this is a general diagram of uh, a process which is known as photophosphorylation in case of photosynthetic bacteria it is the photochemical reaction which has been coupled with phosphorylation and therefore we call it photophosphorylation but depending upon the flow of electron during photophosphorylation we can have two different types of photophosphorylation cyclic as well as non cyclic photophosphorylation cyclic photophosphorylation it is that photophosphorylation where the where the electron which has been removed from photoactivated chlorophyll after passing through components of electron transport chain returns back to chlorophyll and that because the flow of electron is cyclic it is known as cyclic photophosphorylation the process of cyclic photophosphorylation involves photosystem 1 that is p700 and because the flow of electron is cyclic it generates atp but electrons cannot be withdrawn from this cyclic flow for the purpose of generation of reducing power and therefore reducing power is not generated during cyclic photophosphorylation whereas in non cyclic photophosphorylation the electron which has been removed from photoactivated chlorophyll after passing through components of electron transport chain does not return back to chlorophyll that electron it is used for the purpose of generation of reducing power nadp getting reduced to nadph and therefore during non photo non non cyclic photophosphorylation such photosynthetic bacteria require a chemical compound to work as electron donor so that the photoactivated chlorophyll or oxidized chlorophyll can be again reduced back to its ground state and variety of compounds inorganic as well as inorganic uh, organic compounds are used as electron donor during non cyclic photophosphorylation i would just remind you that if we talk about bacterial photophosphorylation or bacterial photosynthesis you bacteria are not able to use water as electron donor they use compounds other than water as electron donor so you know in this brief discussion we have just tried to summarize the different types of I, i would say to give you an overview of the different mechanisms of atp generation in bacteria in chemotrophs as well as in case of phototrophs in those chemotrophs which are having fermentative metabolism as well in case of those chemotrophs which are having respiratory metabolism i hope we have been able to reach you in making this some of the points clear on behalf of nilaben as well as myself we are highly thankful to higher education department to this sandan program and we are also thankful to the technical staff of bisex studio thank you very much